What's up guys, I'm Nobody Special, and globalism is starting to break down as inflation and supply chain problems are causing shortages all over the world rather than allow prices to rise as is the natural market reaction to shortages, a lot of countries are using backdoor price controls and export bans to try to limit prices in their own markets. And as producing countries start hoarding supplies, this is going to only exacerbate supply chain shortages and inflation problems elsewhere. You ready? Hit it. Thank you for joining me. I'm Jack Gamble and I'm nobody special. And the solution to shortages is higher prices. And the solution to higher prices is higher prices. I want you to remember those two key sayings throughout this video because right now we have supply chain shortages and we have higher prices resulting from these supply chain shortages. We also have talked about on this channel a lot how price controls just simply do not work. Although governments around the world have not got that message because a lot of countries right now are starting to ban or limit the exports of vital supplies because of these price increases. They're trying to control prices in their own domestic markets and so they're not allowing their producers to sell at those higher prices in overseas markets. And price controls simply don't work. This is just going to lead to more and more shortages and higher and higher prices. Now, before we get too far into this, I have to ask you folks, could you like this video, subscribe to my channel, and don't forget that notification bell. It really helps me out. It helps me to keep this channel growing, and I'd be forever in your debt. Now, real quick, I just want to touch on a couple of points. In a lot of these countries, we have prices domestically arising. It's getting more expensive to feed your families, and we've done a lot of videos recently about food prices rising out of control and how a lot of world leaders are worried about this because when their people can't afford to eat, there tends to be things like social unrest and civil unrest. So a lot of these overstepping governments are trying to force prices down by banning exports. And this is not going to solve the problem. Case in point, I want you to imagine you're a farmer, right? And you have rampant inflation in your country as prices rise. Your fuel prices have gone up, your fertilizer prices have gone up, and your labor prices have gone up. Well, luckily, that also means the commodities produced on your farm, let's say corn, that is getting more expensive. And so you can sell that corn at a higher price to offset the rising price of inflation. That's why farmers tend to be the main beneficiaries of inflation. And in some cases, you have other countries right now where there are food shortages. And so the prices in those countries are going up, which means those farmers who are suffering from inflation can sell their corn into those markets for a better profit. Now that has the side effect of raising the prices in your domestic market, which means local buyers need to compete with those overseas buyers for that same corn. That is how a free market works. Now the benefits there, as they say, the solution to the shortages is the higher prices, and the solution to the higher prices is higher prices. Because with corn now more valuable, more farmers are incentivized to plant more corn and grow more corn. So you increase the supply on the market, and that tends to bring the prices back down. That is a free market solution to a supply shortage. The price rises, productivity rises with it, and then prices come back down. Now the problem is when governments get involved and they start to say, in order to control those prices, we're gonna ban exports. Now that farmer, who we've already established is paying more for his fuel and his fertilizer and his help, now he can't sell into those valuable overseas markets. Now he has to sell at an artificially lower price into his local market. What does that mean? That farmer is now disincentivized to produce any more corn because the price is not rising. It's not worth it to produce more corn. Worse yet, that farmer might go out of business because his fuel costs went up and his labor costs went up and everything else went up, his fertilizer went up. He can't afford to grow corn anymore. So those price controls actually made the shortage worse. I want you to keep this in mind, how this scenario plays out as we go through these articles, because we are starting to see these backdoor price controls via export bans pop up all over the world. And with that, it is time to shrink my big, fat melon of a head. And let's get into some of these articles. First and foremost, Argentina, a double offender on this list. Argentina here has limited the exports of grain, namely corn and wheat. And Argentina is a vital producer globally of both commodities. And right here you can see Argentina is putting a ceiling on exports of corn and wheat in a fresh bid by the Peronist government to quell food inflation at home. This is 
all about keeping those local prices down so that people don't get too angry. The problem is those Argentine farmers are not going to be allowed to see any of the benefits of these increased commodity prices even as their input costs go up. So this is going to hurt Argentine farmers big time and it could lead to less grains being produced. And they're gonna get higher prices in their local markets anyway because price controls don't work. And I mentioned Argentina was a two-time offender on this list because here we have the same thing. Argentina extends export ban on popular beef cuts to tame local prices. Measures come after beef inflation accelerates again and government has prohibited the export of seven favorite beef cuts. Again, if you are a cattle rancher in Argentina, this hurts your business because you're not allowed to take advantage of price increases in those overseas markets. It means fewer cows are going to be produced. Argentina is going to get those higher prices anyway. Now, more recently, we've seen similar behaviors in energy markets. At the beginning of January, we saw this story. Indonesia bans coal exports in January on domestic power worries. Now, this is a 10-day-old story, and Indonesia has recently pulled back on this ban. So this is no longer in effect, but it does show you how these price controls and how these governments getting involved in power markets can really cause problems. I'm reading from this article, again, this was on January 1st. Indonesia has banned coal exports in January due to concerns that low supplies at domestic power plants could lead to widespread blackouts, senior official at the Energy Ministry said on Saturday. The Southeast Asian country is the world's biggest exporter of thermal coal, exporting around 400 million tons in 2020. Its biggest customers are China, India, Japan, and South Korea. Now with Indonesia, this is a unique case because Indonesia has something called a DMO or a domestic market obligation, i.e. price controls. Technically speaking, Indonesian coal miners are required by law to sell a certain percentage of their coal into the local markets at a maximum price of $70 a ton. Keep in mind a maximum price, okay? They're telling these coal miners that they must sell a certain amount for a certain amount. And then the rest, they're allowed to export. And Indonesia is one of the biggest exporters. Well, as we know, we've had this energy crisis that started in the fall. And some overseas markets, we saw prices as high as $215 per ton in China. So they have this DMO requirement in Indonesia that they sell their coal for $70 a ton when they can get $215 a ton over in China. Lo and behold, the coal miners refuse to participate because when you set a maximum price in your domestic market, nobody's going to sell into that price when they can get more money overseas. The next thing you know, Indonesia had no coal at their domestic power plants. So what does the government do? Do they lift the price maximum on their coal that has made the local markets uncompetitive? No, of course not. That would solve the problem. No, they banned coal exports and they forced the coal miners to start selling into their domestic market. And that had the effect of exacerbating shortages in other markets and driving overseas coal prices even higher. Again, it's those DMO, that domestic price control that they have in Indonesia that led to the local shortage, that led to the export ban, that made the shortages worse in other countries, that sent the prices even higher in other countries. Price controls don't work. The solution to shortages is higher prices, and the solution to higher prices is higher prices. Prices. Now, all of these shortages and all of these export controls, there's a lot of food going on here, and there's energy and there's fertilizer, but it all comes back to energy. This has all started in energy markets, and the way it spread from the energy markets was via fertilizer. And the biggest export ban that we've had recently is the fertilizer export ban from China. And here we have this is back in October. This is a pretty old story, but this is still in effect. China's curbs on fertilizer exports to worsen global price shock. And this was back in October, and that is exactly what happened. Fertilizer prices went up, up, up all through the fall because China announced that they were banning the export, in particular, of phosphates. And phosphates is one of the most vital fertilizers. Coincidentally, phosphates is also the key ingredient in glyphosate, which is a pesticide that's used on a lot of crops. So farmers are also worried about shortages of pesticides now. And as we've been covering on this channel over and over again, these higher fertilizer prices, this fertilizer shortage is going to have the effect of driving food prices significantly higher in 2022 and in 2023. And we know that high food prices means civil unrest. We're starting to see that already in Kazakhstan. And I would not be surprised to see something similar develop in the likes of Turkey and Lebanon, where inflation is running rampant. 
this could really spiral out of control very quickly. And there's even another story here. Now, this is not a ban that is in place. This is Ukraine considering a ban on exports of wheat in the first half of 2022 because they see their local prices heading higher and they're starting to say, you know what, we are a producing country. There's no sense selling this stuff overseas. We're not going to let you sell in those overseas markets. We want to suppress prices here locally for our own citizens. It's going to put the Ukrainian farmers at a real disadvantage, and it could make the supply shortages worse. I just want to emphasize, this is not a ban that is in place. This is just one that's being considered. And lastly, there's another more recent story, and this is coming out of Thailand. Pork shortage has Thailand banning exports ahead of Lunar New Year demand, and this was on January 5th. Thailand imposed a ban on the export of live pigs for three months to cool a rally in prices amid a shortage of meat. Overseas shipments will be prohibited until April 5th, and the Commerce Ministry will monitor the situation to assess whether the ban needs to be extended further, according to the government statement on Thursday. And the price of pork in Thailand has increased by about 30% in 2021. And this story just came hot off the press today, which means those price increases are probably going to get worse because Thailand detects African swine fever in a sample at a slaughterhouse. And this story came out just a few hours ago. Thai authorities said on Tuesday that African swine fever had been detected in a surface swab sample collected at a slaughterhouse in Nakhon Pathom province, marking the country's first official confirmation of the disease. Authorities launched a probe at the weekend after growing speculation in recent weeks that the disease was already decimating Thai pig herds and amid accusations of a cover-up. So now that we have this African swine flu infecting pigs in Thailand, I don't think they're going to be getting rid of that export ban anytime soon. So long story short, all this talk about how we live in a global community and how global trade is good and great and how it fosters a spirit of cooperation and humanity, it all sounds great during times of abundance. But as you can see, as soon as things get tough, as soon as things get scarce or they get more expensive, everybody starts hoarding what they have. And that's going to make the shortages that's going to make these price hikes even worse. We could sit back. We could say, you know what? We are going to let the free market solve this problem for us. We're going to let the prices rise as painful as that's going to be. But of course, that would also incentivize farmers to produce even more, which would lead to abundance, which would bring those prices back down to earth. We could allow that to happen. But no, instead, we're going to opt for these backdoor price controls, i.e. export bans that are only going to lead to more shortages and more price hikes in overseas markets and are not going to have the desired effect on domestic prices because it's going to put farmers out of business. And eventually those shortages are just going to show up on your own shores. So as inflation continues to be a problem and as this fertilizer price problem continues to drive food prices higher and as energy shortages continue to persist, we're going to see more of this breakdown in globalism, more of this hoarding, more of these price controls, and more of these export bans. As governments try to seize more and more control to fight inflation, they still haven't gotten the message that you need to let the free market do its job in order to control these prices. Guys, I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell. It really helps me out. I'd be forever in your debt. Until next time, live small and dream big.